departed Seattle early on a Saturday morning flight headed to San Francisco. I had to laugh at this sign. It looks kind of ridiculous. Welcome to California traffic. <laughs> I was actually bragging before we hit this dead spot. About how fast we were going? Yeah. <laughs> Did you really think we were going to get through any part of California without some kind of traffic? Um, I was hoping. Because we're on vacation. Where are we going right now? We are on our way to the Francis Ford Coppola Winery. What are we going to do there? Eat lunch and drink wine. Yay! And maybe catch a glimpse of Sir Francis. That would be cool. He was there last time I was there. Oh. I know you know. I'm telling <laughs> the audience. San Francisco day, San Francisco day. Too early to check into our hotel, so we headed for the Sonoma Valley. But I still think of you. We never will be through. Our first stop was at the Francis Ford Coppola Winery in Geyserville. The winery includes a museum with memorabilia from many of his films. I absolutely love this desk. I thought it looked great in my office, so I made an offer on it. That I cannot do. Oh well. They also had this car from the movie Tucker, A Man in His Dreams, starring Jeff Bridges. From here, we drove up the valley towards Healdsburg to the Bella Vineyards and Wine Caves. So where are we today? Um, right now, we're at... We're at <laughs> you gotta prep me for that stuff. We're at Bella Winery right now. Bella Winery and, and Wine, wine Caves. caves. So our next stop is the cave. So we started in this beautiful little little spot right here, the and barn. we're gonna the, the barn. barn, and then they have some man-made caves where they do their fermenting, and we're gonna go over there and uh, check it out. We got lucky because they had the wine caves open to non-members this day. Wine caves naturally provide both high humidity and cool temperatures, which are key to the storage and aging of wine. Bella is a family-run winery dedicated to handcrafting small lots of Zinfandel, which of course we bought several bottles of. From here we made the long drive back to the south end of the Napa Valley to the Meritage Resort where we were staying. The hotel sits in the shadow of a small vineyard that boasts the iconic Grape Crusher statue.
Do we have a cool room or what? This is an awesome room. Isn't it? It is It's huge. I could stay here for a month. You could? I don't think I can drink that much wine. Maybe I could. We have a nice little desk here and a... I mean, this is big. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? And the view. And the yeah. views. Let's look at the views. A nice big deck overlooking a token little vineyard with a tow truck where they're towing away people who stay too yes, long. It's Toyota, yes. Huh? You know you've overstayed your welcome when they're towing you away. <laughs> Sorry, you have to leave. The next morning we got up to head up valley to Frank Family Vineyard to meet some friends in our rather interesting rental car, but more on that later. Are you ready for some vino? <laughs> or an intervention? Vino or intervention? No. Vino? Uh, so here's day two. We had a wonderful dinner at the Meritage at the Siena restaurant. And now we're heading up to visit an old friend of mine named Tammy and her boyfriend Rick. Uh, at Frank's Family Vineyards in Calistoga. Our friends Tammy and Rick made the drive from Folsom to meet us for a tasting. Tammy's a wine club member at Frank and we were treated to some fantastic wines. It was a beautiful day and a perfect setting on the back deck and we enjoyed catching up with them. Tammy is a fantastic cook and she spoiled us with a wonderful picnic lunch. On the way back, we stopped in St. Helena at the V. Satui Winery, which was started in 1885 by Vittoria Satui. We hit it at the end of the day where there weren't very many crowds, and we had a wonderful time. V. Santatori. <laughs> Victor Sanatori, or something like that. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> okay, so we just stopped at this <laughs> winery that was founded by this Italian dude that sounds like sanitarium or something. Um, Santatori. Sa Satatori, isn't it? Sa not Satatori. Sa 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 Sanatori. Okay, so I have to explain something. We got a rental car from Fox Rentals and I think we're getting secondary pot high. <laughs> this car reeked of marijuana. And it still reeks and of marijuana. And it still reeks of marijuana, even after leaving the windows open and trying to air it out for a day and a half now. We put it on our, our contract, even. This thing freaking reeks of pot. So... <laughs> we might be funny. He might uh, hope, be. Well, hopefully we don't get pulled over because the cop smells this thing. He's going to think we're wasted more on, than we really are. On wine. <laughs> Not only did you get drink a lot of wine, then you got high. Yeah, right? That's what I'm afraid of. We should have turned it back in, but it's a cool Dodge Charger with a lot of horsepower. So. Back at the Meritage, we went to their small wine bar where it was just the two of us. A nice fellow sat down next to us and it turned out to be Vita Blue, who was a former Cy Young award-winning pitcher, MVP, and six-time All-Star. He was a great guy. He bought us a glass of wine and even recommended that we stop in at Hurley's, his friend's restaurant in Yountville. The next morning we made the drive to Calistoga to tour the legendary winery Chateau Montalena, which was featured in the 2008 movie Bottle Shock. For centuries, the best wines in the world were made in France. 
and in 1976. I just read an article that said California is going to produce wine that will rival the finest of the French. For sure. They held a competition to prove it. I'm going to California to try and find some respectable competition. Did I mention that the tasting was blind? Everything all right here? These Californian wines are all so good. What were you expecting, Thunderbird? Discover the true story. La premier place. That shocked the world. Okay, you've been warned. If you haven't seen the movie, the film is loosely based on a true story of the blind tasting that took place in Paris in 1976, which became known as The Judgment of Paris. This was a wine competition organized by Stephen Spurrier, played by Alan Rickman, who was a British wine merchant in which French judges carried out two blind tasting comparisons, one of top quality Chardonnays and another of red wines. A California wine rated best in each category, which was a big surprise as France was generally regarded as being the foremost producer of the world's best wines. This helped catapult Napa wines into the international spotlight. We booked a tour of the Chateau and the winery, which was constructed in 1888. Do you remember the scene where Bo goes and begs his mother for barrel money? That didn't take place. So she was actually very much involved in the winery. She was up until she passed away about Even a year ago. They were divorced. The actual conversion from sugar into alcohol happens. We use these barrels for, or these tanks, the stainless steel tanks. There's about 48 situated in this room here. So the, <laughs> these tanks, they all connect the to our wine. Five minutes, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> they all connect to our winemaker's iPad, essentially. Oh, that's kind of cool. So the tanks themselves, yeah. make, the vision for this section of the property from York Frank was the Beijing Summer Palace um, in China. So that was his kind of inspiration for it. They had built their own little Chinese pavilions out there, but they didn't have bridges. So he actually had a, he had a junk, which is oh, a kind of long boat, Chinese oh, really? boat. So he actually would float around on that junk here to get from island to island. It was uh, here <laughs> for quite some time, but it eventually kind of rotted out and we had to take it off the lake. And what years were they? They were here for nice sweetness. Sugar. Oh, wow. High alcohols, big wines, lots of oak influence coming in on those wines. But when that happens, you're making a wine that can only age for about 10 to 15 years. Some of the most expensive wines in the world fashion themselves after this triangle, especially in Napa. It's a beautiful style. It's a good style. People really like it. That's just not our style. Our style is more focused on this acidity, focused on the ageability behind it. It's the one that you don't necessarily need to cultivate. You don't need to put down. You don't need to take care of in a cellar. It's just that wine that on a Tuesday night after a long day of work, you want to rip your hair out and you need a glass of wine. That's this one. You know, a glass, <laughs> not a glass. In, in our house, it's called Monday through Friday Monday wine. Through Friday <laughs> so that they don't all die off. Once all your buds die off, your vines will go into a sense of dormancy to survive. So they typically cut to about two buds. This area was ravaged by wildfires in October of 2017, and fortunately the chateau didn't sustain any real damage. After our tour, we worked our way down the valley, stopping at some other wonderful wineries on the way. Most of the wineries close around 5 o'clock. Our last stop was at Behringer Winery, and it ended up being a real treat. There were literally two of us in the winery at one point, and we were treated to tastings by Chuck and Janine, who were fantastic. So it allows us to sample some of the other ones. You're wearing white, huh? Step back. Bear. 
a rare aerator. There's only one of a kind made. Oh, so we won't be able to buy that. Yeah. And, well, we have an extra one that I might be able to scratch out if you really want to buy this. So we're aerating this wonderful Cabernet Sauvignon. So you may taste both to compare an aerated versus a non-aerated. So we were the last people at the winery or at the tasting room, so they gave us this wonderful glass of cab that I guess is like forty dollars a glass is what they said if you it bought it in a restaurant. A hundred and some dollars a bottle. Yeah, over a hundred dollars. It's like hundred and seventy five dollars a bottle. And um, they were getting ready to they had to drink it or get rid of it, so they're gonna they give it to us. So we're walk around the property. And it was Chuck. Yeah, Chuck. And yes. Janine. 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 That so. were at Behringer Wineries. Which were I'm very, very good to impressed us. with because I didn't think I would like them. <laughs> <laughs> the wines are Chuck amazing. was a great guy. We were for the short time we were here, uh, had a great time. So Chuck sent us off with a nice glass of wine and we were able to tour the property all by ourselves. And it just became a fabulous end to a wonderful day. Up to now? Um, something Gregory. No, we're no? up to Stag's Leap. Oh, Stag Leap. <laughs> you had the plan on me. <laughs> Stag's Leap and then Jay Gregory? Yes, because I winery. had a really nice glass of Cab Franc last night and thought we'd chase down that winery. I made an appointment. <laughs> so while we were at the table at Hurley's, um, I actually emailed them <laughs> from my iPhone and they really quickly responded and booked us for 2 p.m. today so we're pretty excited about that but uh, Stag's Leap was one of the participating wineries in the Judgment of Paris the famous one depicted in um, uh, Bottle, Bottle Shock. Shock which is pretty much very inaccurate <laughs> <laughs> we took a tour of Chateau Montalena yesterday and they confirmed that about 15 percent of that movie is accurate uh, so well, it might be fun to watch, it's not historically correct. At all. No. But it should be a fun day. On our last day, the weather gods smiled on us, and since it was off-season on a Tuesday morning, we had this iconic winery all to ourselves. This is our new Bay Visitor Center. We opened September 23rd, 2014. A lot of the stone you see here actually I'm not a big uh, Terminator kid, but that was... Oh, that's exceptional, especially if you like shellfish uh, or a nice buttery salmon. I have to say, I don't like either, actually, and I'm from oh, yeah. Seattle. <laughs> and you live in is Seattle? That, I know, isn't that awesome? How does that happen? Because I'm originally from Southern California, and I'm okay. German. Okay. <laughs> the Germans aren't known for liking seafood. Oh. If, if Germans really, if you can't put a skin around it, they like don't eat it. Like a sausage on it. Well, uh, try me. I'm going to bring out an SLV. Thank you. You're welcome. It was a real treat to taste wines whose grapes were grown in the vineyards that were right in front of us. Now we're empty nesters, so we were here in February, which is very much the off season, and we're told that during the summertime there's no way we'd ever have the same experience due to the volume of people. We had such a great time, I ended up joining their wine club. Our last stop was at Jay Gregory's Cellars on our way out of town. Okay. Yep, why are we going there? <laughs> because we were at Hurley's <laughs> restaurant last night, and the camera woman 
Me. You. Love their... What was Cab it? Franc. Cab Franc or Zinfandel? Cab Franc. Cab Franc. Cab Franc. And I emailed her right from the table and we got in today. That's our last one before we head home. Well, so he says. And if you were to taste them all and make them the same way, they're going to be completely different. Once again, it was just the two of us and Mark and Candace Jessup, the owners of J. Gregory Wineries. Beautiful. 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 We enjoyed them so much, we joined yet another wine club. Well, our safari was so fruitful, we bagged two cases of wine to bring home with us. Fortunately, it was cheap enough and easy enough to find boxes to uh, put it on the airplane. And that's exactly what we did. <laughs> We've had a great time in Napa, but we wanted to share some of uh, what we learned in our trip to Napa so it could be more efficient perhaps for you. Um, as always, whenever you go on a trip, you learn a few things about how you should structure that trip and uh, make the most of it. So a couple of my notes. Um, most of the, well, the main reason we came to Napa was to try out some iconic wineries. Our hotel is at the very southern end of the Napa Valley. We didn't realize that like driving to Chateau Montalene is almost an hour drive north of here. So. If your main reason for coming to Napa is trying wines and tasting at wineries as many as you can, you might want to stay up Valley in Calistoga or St. Helena, uh, one of those cities, because it, it can get uh, difficult to get back to the hotel. And we're staying in a fabulous hotel, um, the Meritage, which is a beautiful facility, but we really didn't get to make use of any <laughs> of it, because <laughs> uh, we pretty much came back and maybe ate and then slept in the room or we ate on the way down so we really didn't only ate here one time um, so hindsight being 2020 we probably would have stayed further up not that the Meritage is a bad hotel it's actually a great hotel but they've got a spa and some other amenities we just didn't have time to take advantage of the other thing to uh, to note is make uh, a lot of the winers require tasting appointments uh, we're from Washington where you really don't have such a thing you just pretty much drive to any winery and they have an open tasting uh, there so you can pay the fee typically they uh, they will waive the tasting fee if you buy a bottle or two uh, depending on how many are in your party uh, whereas here not so much we bought the Napa Valley wine passport again in hindsight I probably wouldn't have done it if you live here it might be great it might be helpful but most of the wineries you went to and wanted to go to weren't even on it which we kind of knew going in um, but the stipulation on being able to utilize it required you to buy so much that in the end it really wasn't worth the money that we paid for it. And again too, we didn't really plan what wineries we were going to go to at what time and if we would have done um, reservations and kind of plotted out what we were going to do, we probably would have been better off. Yeah, yeah, because we assumed you, they would just be open tastings, you could just show up at any time. Bring a, a long extra cord for your iPhone to charge it because we were using the GPS quite a bit and when you're out for the whole day, depending on how good your phone holds a charge, it may run low. Uh, we only had one, so we had to go to a Walmart, which of course there's a Walmart everywhere and there's one in Napa. Always order what your wife orders because it always ends up tasting better than what you ordered, <laughs> which has been true on this trip. Everything she ordered was better than mine. Not that mine was bad, but- uh, It's for, been amazing here. The food is amazing it's here good. and save your money expect to spend a lot. There's virtually nothing here that's cheap except for fast food. Uh, the wines are expensive, the food is expensive. The tasting fees are expensive. The tasting fees are expensive. Uh, so don't come here thinking it's gonna be like a Seattle, Washington wine country experience where you could do it for a lot less. And I'm not trying to promote them at all, it's just different than there. Um, we ate at Grace's table in Napa uh, which was a wonderful find um, and if you do eat there get the chilaquiles <laughs> I think delicious. I'm pronouncing that right chilaquiles for Sunday brunch uh, it is fantastic it was delicious and she got it of course I didn't and I wished I had um, so that's one example of that but we've had a great trip here uh, can't wait to get home to our two little fur babies but um, we of ended course, up, the last day is the best day. It's, it's one today. of the nicest days. It said it would be 60 <laughs> degrees today, but I'm thinking they're going to be wrong because it's sunny and beautiful. Anyway, that's all we got. Bye for now. Bye. 
we always appreciate you watching. If you feel compelled to hit that like button, it's a big help to us. And if you really enjoy this channel, please take the time to subscribe. On our next trip, we head to the island of Aruba.